We are here for a game that uh, has received already a lot of accolades and is yet to come out and won't be coming out until next year. But um, I can even personally say that when I saw Last of Us for the first time, I realized that there's something very new and very special happening with this game. Given the fact that it's coming from one of my favorite developers ever, Naughty Dog. Um, yes, round of applause. Now, what, what are the circumstances of this world? I mean, we, we, we've heard apocalypse, we, we hear the word infected, and you know, there's so much out there that's like it, but the game has its own kind of unique telling of life after the fall, I guess. Uh, we started with, uh, we, we, you know, after we got off of Uncharted 2, we're trying to figure out what we're going to do, and, uh, and we were watching the Planet Earth BBC series, and there's a section in there where David Attenborough is talking about the cordyceps fungus, and there's this zombie ant, basically, that this cordyceps fungus, which is uniquely like, uh, situated for every single different type of insect in the jungle, will take over that insect's brain, and in the ant's case, make it crawl up on a piece of grass, a fungus grows out of its head, and then it releases its spores, thus infecting more ants and repeating the cycle. And we're like, all right, well, what if, that's our jumping off moment, what if uh, that could happen to humans? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of where it started, and we liked this idea a lot. And of course, the visuals of the fungal infection was really interesting and intriguing for us. And uh, it, we thought it brought something new to, um, to the sort of the genre we like. We really felt like in games, no one has really taken this genre and done what has been done in other mediums like comics and film or TV and told a very character driven story. And we felt like, how can we get that kind of tension in a game? Can, is, yeah. is it possible? Is it possible? Can you do that? Because in horror, f horror games kind of have that sometimes, but it doesn't have that character element. So for us, it's like w what we've learned at Naughty Dog and what we've been doing really from Jack and Daxter on through Uncharted and, and trying to build up character relationships and trying to get that on the joystick as much as possible really became a challenge to us. Like, as developers and as game players specifically, we want to play the games that you know, we're making. And that was our challenge, is like, how do we make you as the player feel the way these characters are feeling moment to moment throughout this journey? So what, what, what do you call the game? Because it's not really a horror game. It's not really a stealth game, no, but we, it has some of these elements in it. Yeah, we just call it survival action. I mean, it's just something we pulled out of yeah. our ass. We don't know. I mean, like, <laughs> it, but I, I think one of the key things is that it, it is a violent game, but it's a much different type of violence than I think what you see in a lot of other ones, mm -hmm. where it's almost, it's kind of the last resort for the player. That, you know, you, 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 you don't have many bullets. You don't, you know, you have to kind of look at the world around you. You can try to sneak past. But it seems that what you're up against, be they, they human or otherwise, which we haven't seen yet, that it, it is a different experience for the player than what we normally see when you shoot someone in the face. I mean, it's one of the things we really wanted to push with this game is this idea that there aren't necessarily good guys and bad guys. You just have people trying to survive in this world. And it's just that Joel ends up being on the other side of he's trying to save Ellie, he's trying to save himself. And we want you to see the other people as not just fodder. We want you to see how they care for one another, how they're, they're fighting tooth and nail to survive themselves. And also, we wanted to really ground the violence, just like a Coen Brothers film or something like that, where it, it, you feel the consequences of it. You feel disgusted with yourself when you take these actions, but you should feel the desperation that you have no choice but to take these actions. We really want to try to push like the contrast inside of this game, like in that, and try to make the you know, when you're in melee combat, brutal, brawling co combat with somebody, we want you to feel every impact. And like Neil was saying about the consequence is we want to personalize it. We want to make you feel that your life or Ellie's life, Joel and Ellie, these people's lives are at, at, in, at stake, at, in jeopardy. And uh, Ellie's coming from a standpoint where she was born uh, after this pandemic hit. So after shit hits the fan, like she's 14, this is 20 years in the making this fungal outbreak. and. So she looks at the time before the pandemic as the old world. She, she has no recollection or no, she's curious about, like, we are sitting in this dark auditorium and we all love movies and video games and these things. It's like, she, she hasn't had that. Electricity's been out, she's been uh, living in a quarantine zone, military oppression, so she's curious. She's 14 years old, but in a very different world, so here they are in this situation that if you explore as the player, then you're going to find these points of interaction where you can sort of unfold more of 
her her sort of standpoint and perspective on 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 the world. And it's opportunities for us to show how pr her perspective is different from Joel's and give you kind of hints about their backstory. Um, I mean, Ashley, have, have, have you ever done anything like this where, yes, it's acting, but it's not with everything articulated right in front of you? You, you, you have to imagine some of what that scene is. Right. This is, uh, this is the first time that I've done mocap or performance capture, as they're calling it now. Um, for money. For money, yes. <laughs> Let's not forget about that. <laughs> Awkward. Um, yeah, I, I've uh, never done this, but I haven't been approaching it any differently because, uh, you know, why would I put on the suit and be like, oh, I'm going to do less of a job than I would ordinarily on a set? You know, you bring it, no matter what. And you do. Good. And hopefully I do. And, and <laughs> W. Earl, uh, I mean, what was, I, what, what was it like, A, you get to, like in, in this scene, you get to be at least the, the somewhat bad guy. Yeah. Looks like you're helpful, but you may not be the guy I would fully trust. I mean, how do you sort of, in that moment when you guys are filming it all together, just kind of say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really draw out this character? Well, it's, you know, we just talked about the background of the guy, and you just use your imagination. I mean, it's, it, it's the same as what she was saying. And when you're doing a film, you have all the props, and you have the location. And it, in this, it's all our imagination, because everything's green. I got a piece of green foam at your gun. So it was like being five again, you know, picking <laughs> up a stick. So, you know, that had its lure. That was fun. Um, Earl, I was going to say, I mean, is, is, is it somewhat dislocating to sort of see yourself up there, but it's not really you? It, it, it's always dislocating for me no matter what I do. I don't watch dailies. <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch the, if, I'm, if I like something I've been involved with, I'll watch the finished product over and over and over. Uh, but I can't watch dailies. I get too self-conscious. I, I mean, I, I guess given the idea that it can be played with, you know, the image, that, or, yeah. or, or any of the characters you guys are playing, you're like, well, can I have long, flowing locks? You know, there's no, you know, it's, it's Got rid of my ball spot. Yeah. I was very happy with <laughs> Look at me, I'm already having a fantasy right now, so. <laughs> I, I think going back to character and how it integrates into the game is that you guys aren't just participating in the, the cut scenes, you know, when, when it's really advancing a lot of the story, but that characterization has to be present in the gameplay as well, especially if we're going to, if, if you're going to try to capture that sense of tension and that there's something, that, that there's something at stake. Um, how do you guys all work together so that that same characterization is when the player is actually in control of you guys? Taking the same thing that we've, been, we've learned about this performance capture and getting actors on stage together, and it gives you a more realistic, you know, more contextually based performance, that uh, we've been using that now for our quote-unquote enemies, our humans that are populating the world, and making sure that when you have a faction working together, they care about each other. They might not care about you, but we want that same interaction between two enemies out there. They're, they're going to talk about what they're doing and, and how they're getting through that day or whatever, or how they're coordinating within combat. And that when you shoot one, that the other one's going to react. And because we'll have multiple actors doing ADR at the same time, you get a more realistic performance. Like it's not so stilted and disjointed between these two, but it feels like one is responding to the other one, which is also, I think, unique. And I, I, I think what's interesting about some of that dialogue is, like you said, they're just kind of talking about, like, hey, I got roots, you got berries. You know, they're, they're not like, hey, I can't wait to be evil now. <laughs> and, I, but, I mean, but, and that really plays into the idea that. This, this isn't so an easy right or wrong. Like, oh, okay, he's been designated a bad guy, so I'm just going to pop him in the head. I mean, it's, it, it, I, I, that seems to be just running Sure, wish I had a puppy to kick. <laughs> <laughs> Actual line from the game. <laughs> I think we're ready for a handful of questions. Uh, feel free to ask someone here on this illustrious panel. <laughs> so my question is, how do you, because this could, you know, obviously could be, good, be done into a really great movie. How do you find a balance between making it a movie and not sacrificing gameplay, like having really good gameplay as well as a really thought out and, you know, cinematics movie, all that. I think as long as you look at it, we're not trying to make a movie and a game, we're trying to make an interactive experience and that can come across as a very cinematic at moments or it can come across as just focusing on the gameplay and I think as long as what you're worried or focused on is making sure that each of those elements stand up, that those moments feel real, that the characters feel real, and the gameplay is both immersive and propels you forward, then it doesn't matter if you want to say it's, it's movie-like or it's more game-like. I think you're creating something completely new, yeah? 
All right, let's have our last question. Try to keep it down to, I don't know, two, three words. Um, how much will the um, <laughs> fungus or the paranoia surrounding the fungus affect the game or story? Uh, I, I mean, for us, it's, 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 what we love about this genre is the, the kind of the threat of either the zombies or the disease or whatever it is creates this, all this tension on characters, forcing them to make really difficult decisions. So for us, it's just it's an awesome setup, but we don't want it to be like an, a zombie shooter. So we're going to kind of pick and choose where we show those things and where you feel that threat, but it's, the story isn't about that. It's about the bond between Joel and Ellie. Uh, that was absolutely awesome. Uh, thanks so much for the time of Bruce, of Neil, and of Paul Ashley over there. Give your <laughs> round of applause. Thank you, guys.